Welcome to Top Cable. We are one of the world's largest manufacturers of electrical cables. Our range of cables make the transfer of electricity possible in many different types of installations. All our technology is focused on developing and producing electrical cables of the highest quality. We are certified by the most demanding and best known organizations in the world. In this video blog, we will show you how an electrical cable is made. We are surrounded by electrical cables. We have become so used to them that we hardly notice them. However, if we didn't have them, daily tasks such as switching on a light in a room, using a lift, or turning on a computer wouldn't be possible. The cables come in different types and sizes, which makes it possible to supply electricity to this printer or make a wind turbine work. The technology needed to ensure an electrical cable stays in good working condition for several years without problems involves complicated manufacturing processes which require highly qualified staff. Would you like to know how an electrical cable is made? Follow me. The basic components of an electrical cable are the conductor and the insulation. The conductor channels the current through the cable and the insulation maintains the flow of electricity in the conductor. Cables may also have other additional coverings to protect them and increase their working life. The most frequently used material for the conductor in an electrical cable is copper. Aluminium is also used in specific cases. The first manufacturing process of a conductor is the wire drawing. This consists of reducing the diameter of the copper wire gradually to its final diameter to increase its ductility and conductivity. The copper arrives from the foundry to top cables factories in large coils weighing 5 tons. This copper, 8 millimeters in diameter, is technically known as wire rod. The first stage of the wire drawing is simply called drawing. The diameter of the wire rod is reduced to 2 millimeters during this process. This 2 millimeter wire is then drawn further to reduce the diameter of the wire to the size needed for each kind of conductor. In the last stage of wire drawing, all the wires undergo a heat treatment called annealing. The aim of this stage is to increase the ductility and conductivity of the copper. After the wire drawing, the copper wires are grouped together to make conductors. This process is called wiring. During the wiring process, conductors with different cross sections are made. For example, a cross section as small as 0.5 mm squared to 240 mm squared, 400 mm squared, or even higher for larger current capacities. The machine used to make the cables depends on the cross section of each conductor. The next process in the manufacture of electrical cables is the insulation. This is when we place an insulating cover over the conductor to prevent current leakages. In this process, the insulating material is added by a process of extrusion at high temperature. The insulation ensures there are no current leakages. Several insulating materials may be used. PVC, EPR, XLPE, etc. Different insulation materials may be used depending on the characteristics of the cable required. The quality of an insulation material depends on two basic characteristics, its insulation capacity and its heat resistance. The material's insulation capacity and its thickness determine the cable's maximum service voltage. An insulation material with a high heat resistance allows the conductor to transmit more power than the same cross-section with an insulation with a lower heat resistance. The whole length of the cable undergoes a voltage test to ensure the insulation layer does not have any faults. Phase wiring is the grouping of different insulated conductors to make a multi-core cable. The phases can be identified by color or by numbering them. 
o por numerado de las mismas. A voltage test is also carried out on the whole length of the manufactured cable during this process. And that is how an electrical cable is made. However, in some cases the cable may require additional elements in order to improve its protection or operation. Electrical coverings, also called screens, insulate the signals that circulate in the cable from possible external interference. Las protecciones eléctricas, también denominadas pantallas, aíslan las señales que circulan por el cable de posibles interferencias externas. They also shield the power cables to prevent them from interfering with adjacent signal circuits. Mechanical coverings, also called armor, protect the cable from external damage that may occur from knocks, rodents, and any other potential causes of damage. The armor is made from steel or aluminium and can come in the form of metal strips, wires, or braids. Cables usually have an outer polymer covering for protection. This is called the outer sheath. The sheath protects the conductors and their insulation from external elements which may change their electrical properties, such as moisture, it also protects them from mechanical aggression, which may occur during the installation of the cable. As with the insulation, the outer sheath can be made from a thermoplastic or a thermosetting plastic. The outer sheath is applied like the insulation via a process of extrusion at high temperature. The sheath may be made from different materials depending on the required protection level, the final flexibility of the cable, the work environment, etc so that all top cable customers can correctly identify their cables, the cables are marked with the most important information. Manufacturer, trade name, cable name, number of conductors, cross-section, construction regulation and standards, CE marking, and other information of interest, such as the product certification. There is also a meter-by-meter -meter mark on the cable to help our customers with their stop control. A voltage test is also carried out on the whole length of the manufactured cable during this process, and that is how an electrical cable is manufactured. But the process does not finish here. At Top Cable, we verify the quality of all our cables by carrying out rigorous checks before they're sold. In order to guarantee the high quality required by Top Cable's customers, the cables undergo extensive quality control checks in our laboratories, therefore ensuring that all the cables are free from defects and are ready to be sold. The quality guarantee systems, approved according to the ISO 9001 regulation, are applied during all the manufacturing stages and guarantee that the cables will work perfectly. Orders are managed at our different logistics centers and then they're shipped out to our customers. Our Advanced Warehouse Management System, WMS, provides us with information about the stock status at Top Cable's logistics centers at all times, guaranteeing the availability of the product and allowing us to meet the tightest deadlines. We have created recycling systems at all Top Cable's manufacturing centers for the waste produced during the manufacture of electrical cables. All waste, both from scrap cable and waste produced during the manufacturing process, is delivered to specialized companies to be correctly disposed of. This is how we guarantee that the environmental impact of our industrial activity is kept to a minimum. We get a lot of questions about cable material, specifically about power cables. So we would like to run an experiment 
to see if it is possible to determine the material being used in the construction of a mobile power cable. To do this experiment, we'll use two identical lengths of cables, one from Ixos and another one from a reputable cable maker. We'll call it the reputable brand cable. We've taped the cables in parallel to ensure that the cables are of exactly the same length. At first sight, this cable seemed to be of exactly the same gauge as well. Also, they're both described as being made from stranded pure copper. We now need to remove all the tape because the cable jackets make it difficult to tell any difference we'll cut the jackets off. In this way we'll extract the conductor from the jacket. First one cable and then the other one. This is very interesting. The Ixus cable does not look like copper. In fact its silver color looks like it could be made from another material like aluminum, silver, etc. On the other hand the reputable brand cable seems to have a strong copper color. So, does this indicate that the cable is made from copper? We'll see what the scale shows us. Visiting our trusted Wikipedia page, we'll see what we can find about aluminum and copper. First, aluminum. It is a white metal. It also has a standard atomic weight of 26.98. Next, copper. It's a brown metal with a standard atomic weight of 63.54. A quick calculation, 26.98 for aluminum divided by 63.54 for copper. Aluminum is almost half the weight of copper, only 42% to be exact. To see if this mirrors the weight of the cables, let's use a standard kitchen scale made by Martha Stewart. We bought it at Macy's. Let's place each cable on the scale and see how much each weighs. By carefully placing the repeatable brand cable, we can see that it weighs 79 grams. We'll give it the benefit of the doubt. We'll record 80 grams for the repeatable brand cable. The one that at first looked like being made from copper. Now let's take the Ixos cable and place it on the scale. Whoa! It looks like 186 grams. So, just to be conservative, let's assume 185 grams instead. Now, that's a big difference in weight between two seemingly identical cables. With a little math, we can see that a repeatable brand cable is about 42% of the weight of the Ixos cable. Now, that's a big difference. And it also is a coincidence because 42% is exactly the difference in standard atomic weight between the two materials per Wikipedia. At 79 grams, the repeatable brand cable is so light that I wonder, how does the cable compare to the plastic jacket? 61 grams. Now this is also incredible. The massive looking 4 gauge power cable from the repeatable brand weighs almost the same as the plastic that protects it. Now that's something I didn't expect. So, the cable that looks like it's made from copper, the one from the reputable brand, is actually made from aluminum. Digging a little deeper, Wikipedia describes how CCA, or copper clad aluminum, in other words, aluminum that has been copper plated, has become popular in emerging markets, which means in poor countries, as a cheap alternative to copper. The problem isn't in the price. The problem is that aluminum has nowhere near the ability to transfer power like copper. In fact, and because power in the car results from DC voltage, that is voltage at zero hertz in frequency, a zero gauge copper wire transfers almost twice as much power as an equivalent aluminum wire, regardless of the microscopic layer of copper plating. On the other hand, nickel plating over copper, which is what the Ixos cable has, improves corrosion resistance, which is very important in the car environment. Let's scrape the reputable brand cable and see what's inside. 
If the cable that looks like copper is made from copper, its color will not change. If, on the other hand, the cable color changes, it should be because it is from a different material. Whoa! To confirm what we have been fearing, the cable that looks like it is made from copper is losing its copper color. It begins to show aluminum underneath the plating. The silver looking cable on the other hand, the one from Exos, has visible copper as soon as we scrape the nickel surface. Exos says that they use nickel plating to protect the copper from oxidation. As a result, this cable is so good that it would exceed marine ratings. In conclusion, there is no doubt that Exos stays away from playing the games other manufacturers do. Thank you for watching.